Hi guys. This is D. Igorotek. Today, I will show you how to configure the FortiGate Firewall SNAT or SourceNAT policy. Also, I will show you how the failover works. Make sure you check the previous parts of this video for you to get along. SNAT is an abbreviation for Source Network Address Translation. It is typically used when an internal or private host needs to initiate a connection to the internet. It changes the private IP address of the source host to a public IP address. In the previous video, I showed you how to configure the LAN, VLANs, and WAN interfaces. Now, we will focus on the firewall policy. Go to Policy and Objects. Firewall Policy. By default, there's a configured firewall policy which is internal to WAN 1. What we are going to do is we will delete this policy and I will explain and show you how to create a new policy. Before we proceed, let's do a test first. Since we successfully configured the WAN interfaces then this device should be able to access the internet. We can verify that by opening the CLI console. Run the command execute ping 8.8.8.8. You can see this device is connected and can access the internet. However, if we test from the device connected to this 40 gate LAN, we cannot access or even ping the Google DNS. This is because there's no configured policy or source network address translation configured. To create a policy, click on create new. For this first policy, we are going to allow this admin or internal network to access the internet via the WAN 1 which is our primary WAN link. Since this is for the admin policy then we are going to give a name of admin to internet to make it simple. For the incoming interface, we will choose the admin or internal. You can verify by checking the IP address and also the interface members. You have the option to directly edit here if you want. Click on it to select. For the outgoing interface, we have three WAN links which are ISP1, ISP2 and ISP3. We have to choose the primary link which is WAN1 or ISP1. For the source, we must choose the network address for this interface. If we check back the admin or internal interface, a network address object has been automatically created named internal. So, we are going to find the internal address and select it as our source. You can also verify from here by checking on the subnet. For the destination, since this is a basic policy then we will choose all. This means anything from the internet. Schedule to always. This scheduling will be on a different topic. Services to all. This means, we are allowing all services for this policy. Action should be accept. If you choose deny then it will deny all the traffic from the selected source to destination. Next is the NAT. Make sure this option is enabled. If not then you cannot browse the internet. For the IP pool configuration. You only choose this option if you want to NAT the source to different IP address. This would be on different topic. We will use outgoing interface address for this demo. Next is the security profiles. For this security profiles, you can find all these options on security profile category. We will open a new window so that we don't need to redo the policy. Here, you can view all the security profiles. For this demo, we will use all the default profiles. We will dive deep into this topic in a different video. We need to enable them one by one. Tick on it to enable. Now, expand the down arrow then choose the profile you want to use. Again, we will use all the default profiles for this demo. To explain this briefly. The antivirus examines network traffic for viruses, worms, trojans, and malware. Web filter is the feature to control web traffic of firewalls by using block or allow action. This is where you block or whitelist websites. DNS filter blocks access to resolving known bad sites so you can't even get to them if they are part of a malicious network. Application control is where you monitor, block or allow applications on the devices connected to this network. IPS or intrusion prevention system protects against known threats including malware and underlying vulnerabilities. File filter provides the email filter profile with the capability to block files passing through a 40 gate based on file type. 
SSL inspection inspects the traffic for malicious content. Since this is all to all policy then we need to enable all the security profiles available for better security. For the logging options, it's highly recommended to enable this option for log checking and troubleshooting purposes. We have two options, security events records only log messages relating to security events caused by traffic accepted by this policy. Another option is all sessions, which records all log messages relating to all of the traffic accepted by this policy. Comments is optional. Make sure the enable policy is enabled then click OK to apply the changes. We can now see the newly created policy. This is a very basic policy. This means, we are allowing all the internal network to access the internet without any scheduling, no restrictions and allowing all services. Now, if you look at the bytes counter, it's zero because there is no traffic running through this policy yet. Let's open back the command prompt. Hit the up arrow on your keyboard then hit enter. Notice that we can now ping the Google DNS. Since we enable the NAT then we should be able to browse the internet as well. We can open a new tab and browse any websites. We can now browse the internet as well. Let's go back to the firewall policy. Again, notice the counter is zero. If we refresh the page then we can see that we have now traffic running through this policy. This is the traffic for accessing the website and also the ping to Google DNS. Now, if you want to add more columns, click on Configure Table. Choose the available options you want to add. For this demo, we will add the ID. Now click Apply to save the changes. You can see the ID column which has been added. We can rearrange the columns. Hover your cursor into it then click and drag where you want it to be. Notice the policy ID is 1. Now, for better security and for better management, this all to all basic policy must be avoided. It's always best to create a per service policy instead. First is we will create a policy for HTTP and HTTPS traffic. Since we already have the created policy then we can just simply clone and modify the policy. It would be very easy and very quick. To do this, right click on the policy. Click copy. Now, right click again on the policy and we have the option to paste above or below. If we choose above then it will be on the top of the original policy or the source policy. If you notice the policy ID, it's 2 because the policy ID is following the sequence from number 1 going up. So if we create another policy then it would be policy ID of 3. Now, let's edit the cloned policy. Since this policy is for HTTP and HTTPS services then we will give a name of HTTP, HTTPS for our reference. Everything will be the same except for the service and security profiles. Let's check first the service. We can use the search bar to search for the service. Click on HTTP and HTTPS to add. Next is the security profiles. We will enable only the needed ones and disable the unneeded profiles. If you cloned a policy then you will see this in the comments. You can modify or remove the comments. Make sure to enable the policy then click OK to apply the changes. You can create more policies for each service. We will do one more policy for the DNS. We can clone and modify again any of the created policies. Notice the policy ID is 3 as it follows the number sequence. Policy ID is also useful for troubleshooting. Now, we will edit the clone policy. Since this policy is for DNS then we will give a name of DNS. Again, we will change only the service and security profiles. For the service, we will remove the HTTP and HTTPS and change it to DNS. Enable again the needed profiles and disable the unneeded ones. Change or remove the comments. Now, click OK to apply the changes. We can enable the policy from here, right click on it, hover your cursor to set status then choose enable. To rearrange the policies, hover your cursor on the eight dots icon until you see the drag sign. You can now drag and drop where you want it to be. Since this is for DNS it should be at the top. The policy role is top comes first. This means, the traffic will hit first the DNS and then goes down to HTTP, HTTPS. 
All the remaining services which we haven't configured or specified will pass through all to all basic policy. You can keep on creating per service policy and then observe this all to all policy. If no traffic hits this policy then you can delete or disable this policy. To delete a policy, you can right click on it then choose delete or click on the policy to select and then tick delete at the top. If you have a bunch of policies then you can use the search bar to find a policy. You can also change the view by sequence. The default is interface pair view. I prefer this option since you can see the source and destination interface. Now, since we allow the admin or internal network to access the internet. We will now proceed with the VLANs. We can allow this guest or server to access the internet via WAN 1, WAN 2 or WAN 3. Since the process is all the same, for this demo, we will just allow this server VLAN to access internet through WAN 1 which is our primary. We will do the same process again. We will clone and modify any of the running policy. For the server, we will just create the basic policy which is all to all so we will clone this all to all policy. We will give a name of server to internet. For the incoming interface, we must change it to the server VLAN interface. You can verify by checking the IP address and also the VLAN ID which is 100. The outgoing interface is our primary WAN connection which is the WAN 1. For the source address, we must change it to the server's address. If we go check back the server VLAN interface, it automatically created an address object named server address. Now, look for the server address and set it as the source address. Remove the internal address because the source is the server VLAN interface, we must choose only the address which is within the same subnet as the source interface. The rest should be the same since this is all to all policy. Modify the comments if you want. Make sure to enable the policy then click OK to apply the changes. You can now see the newly created policy which is server to WAN 1. You can do the same process for the guest or if you have different LANs or VLANs configured. Since we have policies for admin to WAN 1 and server to WAN 1. What we are going to do now is create also policies for WAN 2 to back up WAN 1 in case it fails or has some issue. We will create only all to all policies for this demo just to show you how the failover works. We will clone again any of the current policies. We can give a name of admin to internet backup for our reference. No need to change the incoming interface since this policy is for the admin or internal. We will only change the outgoing interface to WAN 2 which is our backup WAN connection. The rest would be the same. Modify or delete the comments. Enable the policy then click OK to apply the changes. We have now the policy for admin or internal to WAN 1 and also policy for admin to WAN 2. Next is the policy for server to WAN 2. Same process again. We will give a name of server to WAN 2. Everything would be the same except for the outgoing interface, we need to change it to WAN 2 which is the backup connection for WAN 1. Modify or delete the comments. Enable the policy then click OK to apply the changes. We have now the policy for server to WAN 1 and server to WAN 2. Now, we will test the failover. Assuming the WAN 1 has some issue or down then the WAN 2 should take over all the traffic since we created also the policy for it. Before we proceed, we will open the command prompt to monitor also the connection to the internet. We will do a continuous ping to Google DNS. You can see the connection is stable. I already turned off my Wi-Fi so that we will use only the LAN which is connected to the FortiGate admin or internal port. Now, let's disable the primary connection which is the WAN 1. To do this, right click on it. Hover your cursor to set status then choose disable. Notice that the ping to the Google DNS is still going through, this is because we configured WAN 2 to be the backup and also created a policy for it. We haven't even encountered any request timeout during the failover. If we go back to the firewall policy, you can see the yellow exclamation mark. If you hover your cursor onto it, it says that the policy has some issue which is the destination is down. This is because we shut down or disabled the destination interface which is the WAN 1. If you notice the admin to WAN 2 policy, it has now some hit counts, this is because the traffic is now going through this policy. To verify, you can open a new window and go to whatismyip.com and you will see the IP address of WAN 2. 
Alternatively, we can also clear the counters if we want to monitor the policy. Right click on the bytes. Choose clear counters. Now it's back to zero. We can do it to all of the policies. Now, we can browse the internet just to initiate some traffic. You can go to any websites you want. Let's now go back to the firewall policy. Again, notice the bytes are all zeros. Let's refresh the page. You can see that all the policies to WAN 1 are still zeros. We only have the traffic for WAN 2. What we are going to do now is enable back the WAN 1. Assuming the connection issue has been restored or recovered. The internet traffic from WAN 2 should fall back to the primary connection which is the WAN 1. Let's monitor the connection to Google DNS as well. Now, let's enable back the WAN 1 interface. In some cases, the PPPoE connections take some time to reconnect. Notice that we have one request timeout. This is expected if the traffic is falling back to the primary connection. Let's check back the firewall policy. We're going to clear the counter from admin to WAN2 which is for the backup policy. We can test browse the internet again just for us to monitor which policy is being used. Now, let's refresh the page. Notice that all the traffic fall back to WAN1 which is our primary connection. You can see the admin to WAN2 has a zero hit count. This means, this policy is not being used currently because the WAN1 which is our main connection has been restored. For the failover method, we need also to configure the SLA link monitoring. This measures the health of the WAN link especially the primary connection. That would be on different topic, or you can check the link on the description below. Well, that's all for today's demonstration and I really hope you liked this video. If you are new to my channel, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe and click on the notification bell for more amazing tutorials. Thank you and see you in the next video.